Hello and welcome to another episode of Stardew Valley here on Not Your Professional Walkthroughs channel with me, your host Max. We are all gonna pray that tomorrow it's gonna rain so I can finally upgrade the watering can so it will be ready for the first of summer. No! Damn it! Oh, what the hell? Um, I'm just gonna go and take it to Clint's shop, no matter what. And today is another good luck day, so... I don't know, we went to the mines last episode. I, however, still feel like we should go there some more, so... Any complaints? Anyone? Anyone? No? Beautiful. But of course I don't want to do just that, I can potentially go and drop off some items to the community center. Like the 10 bat wings. We're gonna take this mineral to the museum. The solar ascents will serve us with the bat wings for one of the bundles. can drop off quartz as well, I think. We don't have the fire quartz, we have the earth crystal, however. So that will be fun. We can take one iron bar, one copper bar. And I'm actually thinking, which trust me hurts me more than you, even though you have to endure watching this. Uh, I'm actually thinking after I water my crops that I will just freaking take the watering can to Clint and just get the upgrade over with. So it will stop bothering me because the weather seems to be really lovely this walkthrough for me. Other times I cannot get a sunny day even if I want to. And because I'm playing the game vanilla and I'm not using the mods to adjust the weather based on my needs, well, yeah. We already did get the second crop of the strawberries, but here is the big problem. There is way too much cauliflower planted on my farm for it to not fully grow. So most likely I will not be able to actually go and drop off the damn... watering can at Clint's. So what will I try to pull up here? Well, I definitely cannot turn all the copper into the tappers. I'm not sure if we will get one more crop of green beans, but most likely not. It will take some time for the coffee to grow, so we will probably get harvest during the summer season. And yeah, that this, this will complicate things for me. Obviously, I will not be planting anything else for the end of the season. But I do want to get at least one upgrade. And I would actually love to get the 300 wood to get on the beach to the additional space so we can be foraging more items. The fun thing is actually that even if you don't get too many forageable items there, you can still utilize the area for let's say kegs or something else. It's totally up to you. If you will leave a bunch of crab pots there, you can actually make an item later on in the game which will produce to you bait. Because you need for the crab pots the bait and trust me the bug meat will start running out real fast 
later in the game and usually since the money is no longer an issue I tend to buy the bait from Vili instead of actually going through the mines and grinding through the bugs so yeah I definitely need to get at least one of the tools upgraded I'm not sure if I will go with the hoe or something but we need to get one of the tools at least upgraded it will not break the bank that's for sure it will only cost us the certain amount of gold which is like 2000 but I really really need the upgrade so I'm thinking actually it will be the hoe which I will take since I will not be utilizing it for the rest of the season and yeah okay, let's eat more salmon berries do we have some horseradish beautiful let's get rid of you to free up some space okay 135, that's still not enough, but the time is running out real fast. So most likely I will not get the bridge on the beach done today. But since we have so much iron, we can actually craft some... ...of the crab pots. So, how about we make like three of them? And most of the wood is now gone, of course. So why not? And. yeah. So, we require one of these. We require six of these. Actually, if I have Frozen Geode, Omni Geode, what I can do before I get the tool upgraded is to actually open up the geodes. This is important because while Clint will be working on your upgrade for two days, he will actually not be able to open or do anything else for you. He will just notify you that the tool is still not upgraded, so you have to wait for it to finish before you can get anything else done. Which is unfortunate, but that's how the game is set up, so I'm not gonna complain about it, because I really like the game, and the community of the game seems to love it even more, so I don't wanna upset the community, of course. Okay, if we take one of you, we can actually make these. We can drop off these, and next year we can start off with 80 spring seeds. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So, is there anything else I can take? No. Okay, let's run off and try to remember all the things I want to get done and not screw up the order. Is there anything forageable? Nope. Okay. Ooh, and today is Friday, so we need to go check out the traveling merchant as well. So that's one more thing to the list of the items which we need to do. God, I hope I will not screw this up. I don't know why I keep dragging him into my mess, but... Well... Yeah, unfortunately. Okay, let's open up the geodes. That's not good. That's better. That's good. I was hoping for something else, but even that will do. So we will want upgraded hope. Beautiful. Let's go deliver the minerals to the museum. I think we can drop off two of them. Actually three of them. I totally forgot about this. We got another 
sword, which is beautiful. Ooh, another portrait. I love the little portraits. They're so nice. We're gonna go drop off the crab pots into the ocean. I actually prefer the sea shellfish compared to the freshwater one because the potential to get lobster and right now when we don't have the hoe there are those worms which can only be interacted by the use of hoe, of course. Okay, I like to drop these guys over here. And we will unequip the bait, load up the crab pots, and come here tomorrow hoping to find something useful. If you wanna befriend Elliot is his name? Am I correct? Yeah, if you wanna befriend Elliot, the best gift for him is lobster. And for a guy living on the beach, he sure has a fancy taste. Lobster. <laughs> Damn. Okay, anyhow, let's run up into the community center, drop off as many things as possible. We know that we are finishing at least one of the bundles. Potentially, therefore, we can get open the bulletin or the treasure room. The treasure room is the easiest room if you have money to finish. So, the adventures bundle. We need 10 of these. One of you. Bundle complete. What do we get? A small magnet ring. Okay, that's cool. Uh, the small magnet ring will actually drag the items towards us. So we don't actually have to run directly to them. So let's equip it for now. Yeah, I know we don't have exactly the best rings equipped, but later on I should be able to craft something better. And here comes my least favorite part of the whole bundles. Bulletin board. The bulletin board has list of so highly specific items which you need to deliver. Okay, so let's go through them. The field research bundle. Okay, so we have purple mushroom. Lucky enough for us, cave has us covered, so we can get the purple mushroom there. The nautilus shells. We will need to wait, I believe, until winter to potentially get this, or is it autumn? I don't know, I will have to look it up, and I will put the picture somewhere here, or here, or here, or somewhere. Chub is the easiest thing for us to get, and frozen geode will be kind of dropped off our last one at Clint's store. This is the dye bundle. So, red cabbage. Now let me tell you something about why I don't like this bundle. Red cabbage is a summer crop, but guess what? Pierre will sell this specific seed only on the second year of the game. So before that, there's no chance you can actually purchase it. What can actually, however, happen, and this managed to happen to me previously when I played the game. When I went to the traveling merchant where we need to stop by, I was actually able to find red cabbage in her inventory. So what I did was I purchased the red cabbage, okay? And uh, I delivered it here, obviously. But what you can do, potentially, if you want to have a bigger crop, even in year one with red cabbage, or potentially artichoke, which is another seasonal plant which can be only purchased in the year two. You can put the red cabbage into the seed maker, potentially get two red cabbage seeds, grow two red cabbage, then multiply those in the seed maker and so on and so on. So you will have some red cabbage for the coleslaw 
recipe which we I think already have but we don't have the mayonnaise and we of course don't have the red cabbage the aquamarine is kind of easy to get we had a bunch of those and I think I have one more duck feather you need upgraded coop in order to get ducks once you have ducks you need higher relationship with the ducks in order to get duck feather once again duck feather can be purchased at traveling merchant Red mushroom, we can manage to do that, of course, thanks to our mushroom cave. Sea urchin, we need to get the 300 wood in order to build that bridge on the beach and get to the extended part of the beach. Sunflower can be grown during summer and fall, I think, so there should be no issue with that. Chef's bundle. So this is for Gus. Truffles. You need fully upgraded barn in order to purchase pigs. Each pig costs you 16,000 gold. Yes, you heard me correctly. 16,000 gold. But the pigs will find you truffles. Truffles are incredibly valuable items. Which is why the pigs are so highly which is why the pigs are so expensive at Marnie's store. Fiddle, fiddle hat fern can be only harvested during summer season in a secret forest. The secret forest is a hidden area to which we can get only after I believe we upgrade our axe to the iron quality as we need to chop down a really big log. Maple syrup can be obviously get from the tappers on maple trees. Poppy seeds, well we need to grow a poppy. Mackey roll is the basic recipe which I was referring to a few episodes previously. So basically you need rice, which you can purchase at piers, seaweed, which you can catch in the sea, and any kind of fish. This is not hard. Fried egg, you need any egg and a kitchen. I think maybe oil potentially, I will probably have to leave a recipe somewhere around here. And so yeah, th this is, this can be manageable. Now, fodder bundle. Wheat can be grown during summer. If you want to get hay, you need to actually have a silo and you need to also uh, have the patches of grass growing on your farm so when you actually cut it with your scythe it will be collecting into the silo for your animals as food apples you need an apple tree an apple tree takes 28 days to fully grow and develop. Which is why I usually try to plant my trees during the first of winter. This means that at the first of spring I will have first harvests. The trees can only produce up to three pieces of fruit maximum on it so on the first day you will have one on the second day you will have two pieces of fruit on the third day you will have three pieces of fruit if you do not harvest your fruit on the third day on the fourth day you will actually not get any more fruit so you are losing on your harvest what actually happened to me in one of the previous playthroughs was that I utilized the bat fruit cave. And guess what? They dropped off two apples. It took me two years to get a fully grown apple tree since I did not plant them in the greenhouse, which I now realize was kind of idiotic from me. And this was the last freaking bundle I was waiting for at 
year two during the fall season. This this bundle was the last one I had to finish. I had everything else done. This is the last thing I was stuck on. I was cursing the Batcave so much because I was missing only one apple. And the funniest thing was that when I picked up the two apples, they were of the regular quality. But of course, in the meantime, I leveled up my foraging to the iridium quality only items. So when the bats dropped off that third apple which I was waiting for, of course I could not have combined one iridium apple and two regular apples. So I almost rage quit the game because this was so infuriating and I had to wait three days in the fall season to have three goddamn apples. The fun thing about apples or any other fruit tree is following. The first year you will grow your trees. They will be producing to you regular quality fruit. When you have year two and the trees had full season behind them, they will start producing, I believe, silver quality fruit. Third year, they will start producing gold star quality fruit. Not sure if on the fourth year they will actually start producing iridium quality fruit. Never gone that far in one of my walkthroughs, as usually by the end of year two I'm kind of feeling that I need once again challenge in the game, so I usually start a new game with a different layout or something to mix it up a little bit. But yeah, that, that's my experience with this lovely bundle and the last one is the one for Osmondius. We need oak resin, any type of wine, rabbit's foot, and pomegranate. I do think pomegranates grow in the fall on the trees, so you need a fruit tree once again, or you can potentially purchase this at the traveling merchant. Rabbit's foot. Well, you need a fully upgraded coop in order to have rabbits in it, the woolly rabbits can produce either a piece of wool or even rarely drop the rabbit's foot. I usually don't like buying rabbits for my coops. I rather have ducks or chickens. Because, for example, chickens, if you have full relationship with them, they keep dropping large eggs and you keep turning it into mayonnaise you are making ton of money. Rabbit, however, drops wool maybe once, twice a season, even if you have the full relationship. I'm not a huge fan of rabbit, but I will probably have to get a rabbit, as you can actually, I believe, find rabbit's food as one of the drops in the skull cavern, potentially, if you kill one of the mobs in the cave, so, yeah, th there's the potential of that as well. So, yeah, overall, bulletin board, kind of fun. I cannot believe I managed to talk so much about this, but, so, oh, what the hell. Sturgeon, we will require summer for that. Bram, we should be able to pull off Bram anytime. Walleye, I think, is summer once more. Shad... And tiger trout are of course different season. We will potentially the three crab pots can get us the three remaining shellfish to fill this up, which will give us I think three more crab pots, so that's cool for us. And this this is a fun little bundle. So puffer fish can be caught only during summer. Ghost fish can be caught in the mountain in one of those lakes where I complained that I did not have the fishing rod with me. It was one of the previous episodes. Something in those levels uh, 40 to something. So yeah, you can get the ghost fish over there. Sandfish you can only catch in 
the uh, desert oasis, which is like a small little lake in the desert. It's really hard to miss because it's by the entrance to the skull cavern. And I can tell you right now, catching a sandfish is a pain in the ass. What skip can be found in the secret forest? It can be found there, I believe, during most of the seasons. But because you first need the axe at the iron level, so it usually takes you a bit to get there. Once again, puffer fish, ghost fish, sand fish, and wood skip, I believe, can be purchased by the from the traveling merchant. Not by the traveling merchant, from the traveling. English and uh, yeah tuna red snapper that's summer tilapia that's different season as well so yeah uh, we have still plenty of things to do but so oh, well the pantry will be pain in the ass to get done still want to go into the boiler room to drop off the iron bar, the earth crystal, possibly the quartz. Yep, so the quartz, the frozen tear, the earth crystal, we only require the fire quartz to complete the geologist bundle. We'll drop off the iron ingot, the copper ingot, we only miss the gold ingot. So the boiler room can potentially be done super fast. And now... I need to check if... Yep. I'm gonna drop off this, because I would really hate if I left once again without it. So now we still have some time, so I'm gonna potentially run into the mines. We still have sufficient time to potentially get deeper in them. And we have plenty of food to get us deeper in the mine. Oh yeah, totally forgot. I need to go to the traveling merchant now because she's opened only until certain time. So we will need to backtrack to the mine after we go check on her wares. This is why I wish we would have that coffee bean much sooner. Because we could have been running through this place much faster. Trust me, once I will have first coffee mug and you will see the difference. You will understand what I'm talking about if you've never played the game. If you know the game, then you obviously know the use of... Okay, so another coffee bean for 2500. Do we want to do it? Of course no. Rare seed. This will actually grow you the sweet jam berry, which is one of the most rarest and most expensive items which you can grow on your farm. It takes 28 days. If you utilize speed grow or you have higher farming, I believe I've been told, it can take less than 28 days, so it can be like 26. If you use the super speed grow, for example, this can be the case. So apple sapling, 5,000, not a chance. A honey, uh, about honey, I will have probably discussion on its own. Look at that, we can actually grab a shad for 1,000. We can have tulips. And blueberries. So we can have the puffer fish and the shad, and we can deliver these. And this is why I wanted to go to the goddamn traveling merchant because she's awesome from time to time. We're gonna go check since we are here if there are any spring onions, as I would appreciate the additional boost of energy which we can get from them. 
And I'm not sure how much deeper we will get into the mines, but... Okay, we even have maple syrup, so we can deliver this for the chef's bundle. I will obviously need to get more of the tappers installed over here as you require actually the maple syrup in order to make the bee house. Once again, 8 coal to make a bee house. God damn it. I, I don't understand why you would require coal for a bee house. But the creator wanted to make it challenging, so job well done. There are other things for which we can utilize the maple syrup, but those are little spoilers and in case you never played the game before, I don't want to spoil it for you and I hope you will stick around with me on the channel long enough to see what I'm talking about. Okay, so we will drop off one of you. We will take one of you. We have a horseradish. Do we have a leak? Oh yeah, this reminds me. Have you ever seen... Uh, what what's the name of the animated movie? Uh, God damn it, I just totally forgot. It it was an animated movie about the guy who made the machine that changed the weather, and instead of rain, it was falling pancakes, cloudy with a chance of meatballs. I think the sequel to that movie. Had one of the funniest scenes ever. There's a leak in the boat! Revolving around a leak, and potentially if I won't get demonetized, I will leave a clip for that. Okay, well, I hope you guys liked it. And... Yeah. Okay, so. We're gonna sell the clam. We're going to deliver pufferfish, shad, maple syrup. We're going to keep the spring onions, horseradish, salmon berry for energy. Okay, so obviously since it's like 8 p.m. we won't manage to do that much more in the mines. But every little bit we get closer to our goal will help us greatly. Okay, and we need the chef's bundle for this lovely item. I still have the goddamn portrait in my inventory. Kinda of forgot about it. I should have also sold the clam, but... Oh well, let's see if we can manage to get something in the mines done. I'm not expecting a miracle, but anything is appreciated. Or I can just be catching fish, of course. That's also an option. We haven't done that in a while. The only reason why I advise you to go up here to catch fish is because of the largemouth bass. This is the only location where you can bu buy it, where you can actually catch it. Sure, it's most likely you will run into carps, chops, wood skips, green algae, seriously. Green algae, you're gonna give me that when I'm trying to make a point about a large mouth bass. How about you give me a large mouth bass instead? Oh, 
Oh yeah! Since I'm catching fish... Ooh, Chop, we can actually deliver this for the Demetrius's bundle. I wanted to ask... Uh, this is... Uh, for example, now, since the fish got out of the green bar, I will no longer have a perfect catch. Does the perfect catch increase the quality of the fish which I'm catching? Or is it more predetermined by the level of fishing which I currently have? I'm just asking as you know that for example sometimes like now I had the carp jump out from the green par. So now I don't know if I caught the silver star one or the regular one. But it happened to me that I did not get a perfect catch and I actually managed to catch a gold star fish. And when I caught like for example perfect catch, I got lesser quality of a fish. And this was even despite me having for example higher level of fishing. Or for example if you want to spend money, you can go to Willy's store and get the trout soup. Which will increase your fishing skill by two points, I believe. I think th this was left in the comment section by one of you viewers. I never utilize these recipes from the stores, and it means I need to spend money. And if I'm not spending money for upgrades or seeds, I'm I'm kind of not feeling it. So if I know I can make the meals myself. I will probably do them myself. It, it just depends what's the meal. Because if I go into, for example, Skull Cavern, I usually just try to get, for example, like uh, honey glazed yams because they restore a really large amount of HP and give you also like 200 points of energy or something. So it's like super, super cool. Of course, I do not advise you to eat so much sugar, but uh, for the purposes of this video and the topic of eating efficiently in the game, that's one of my favorite recipes to make. So during the fall season, I definitely go for the yams. And don't even get me started on the fact how I accidentally discovered that pumpkin juice is one of the most valuable artisanal items which you can make. I was actually planning to put something entirely different into the keg when that happened to me. I misclicked, put in the pumpkin, and when I then saw the pumpkin juice, I was laughing my ass off when I saw the price for the pumpkin juice. It was even better than I believe for the pumpkin itself, so... And if you have the level 10 talent for increased price of artisanal goods, it's even better for you. But yeah, that, that will be most likely it for this episode. We're gonna run back to our farm. We are getting dangerously close to the end of the spring. And I hope you guys are enjoying the content enough to stick around to see what will happen actually during summer. I so hope I will be able to get deeper in the mines. Meaning I definitely need to upgrade my pickaxe as the next possible tool so we are more efficient in breaking rock and getting deeper in the mines but yeah I hope you guys liked the episode if yes maybe subscribe click like recommend the channel to one of your friends or just check out the videos on the channel I usually link a link to the channel in the description of the video so yeah uh, that will be most likely it for today I hope you guys liked it I appreciate the support in whatever shape or form it may come 
and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.